pastor deci- had this idea, you know, of uh, with this desire to want to start a start an institute, you know, and I was like, man, that's that's really good, you know, because I'll tell you something. There's four things that I've always thought that you know how you know you can how you know you're saved, you know. Uh, one of them is, uh, of course, you have a love for God. I mean, if we're saved and for Christians, you know, we ought to have a love for God, <laughs> you know. We ought to, and the Bible says, uh, uh, we ought to love the brethren. That's two. And the th- a third thing is, uh, if you're saved, you'll have two natures. You'll have an inner conflict all the time. That's how you know, you know. Uh, I don't want to do this. I shouldn't have done this. Should I do this. I do this. I do that. You know, it's always uh, something going on inside. This is evidence of salvation. And uh, one, the fourth thing is, you'll have a love for God's word. And that's, that's what I'm talking about here tonight. You know, you guys, I really appreciate you coming out here and, you know, sitting here and going through this. It's a real blessing to me, and I hope it's a blessing to you. So that's good. So you're here. So that's great. All right. Um, let me get my uh, introduction here thing to the book of Romans. Of course, is, is what we're going to be studying. The book of Romans is one of the main books in the New Testament. Uh, and it's one of the greatest books in the Bible. It's the great evangelical book on salvation. Uh, the, theme, the theme of the book of Romans would be uh, justification by faith. That would be the theme. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to put that down, justification, here, because I'm going to put some other words down with that. I say that that would be, that'd be a theme, but it would be uh, uh, the, the justification by faith. How you get justified is the righteousness of God, and that's just all through Romans. So, you know, you say the righteousness of God, justifi- uh, justification by faith. So Martin Luther, everybody knows who I'm talking about here. You know, I'm not talking about Martin Luther King. You know that, don't you? Martin Luther and the German, ref- the, the German reformer. Uh, his, his, two, his two books that, that he loved was uh, the book of Romans and uh, Galatians. Those were, uh, the book of Romans uh, is uh, that you're saved by grace through faith plus nothing. And Galatians uh, teaches you how that you're kept by faith plus nothing. So uh, Martin Luther's two great books. Uh, I tried to get a, a type of an outline for the book of Romans. But I was having a hard time coming up with it. Like, for example, you know... Uh, We'll see as we study it, like the uh, first chapter of Romans is uh, uh, the Gentiles lost. Uh, the second chapter of Romans, the Jews lost. And uh, uh, so you want to get it like an outline. The third chapter is, uh, you know, the, uh, they're all in a mess, you know. So, I mean, it, it's not, I know it's not very, uh, you know, uh, what do you want to call a high church outline there, but there's, uh, you know, uh, the Gentiles lost, the Jews lost, and they're both in a mess. And <laughs> So the whole world is. Okay, so um, like I say now, w- one of the main things is the reason why uh, that you need to uh, uh, know that if you're going to study uh, about the doctrine of salvation, uh, if you're going to learn how, uh, um, how to get saved, how to tell somebody to get saved, if you want to know where to start at for a Christian, you, w- you need to start in the book of Romans. Um, if you, if you went to uh, uh, Hebrew, James, Acts, um, Matthew, that's the wrong, wrong starting place. I mean, James says that you're justified by uh, works. You know? So you, you, don't, you don't start, and uh, James is written to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Uh, uh, you, you go in these books right here, the, the, what I'm saying is the Holy Spirit will not lead you to uh, interpret a, a, a clear verse in, in the light of an obscure verse. You, know, uh, you, don't, you just don't do that. So you, Romans is the book for uh, uh, all those uh, uh, doctrines of justification and you know, salvation and uh, all that. We'll see all that in a, in a few minutes. Uh, it always leads you to interpret an a obscure verse in the light of a clear one, not, uh, uh, not the other way around. So, uh, so I don't know if this is, uh, well, we, we can put this down here. Uh, okay, Romans has, Romans has, uh, Romans has, 
don't have that. <laughs> that ain't no S. <laughs> uh, Romans has 16 chapters. It has uh, Four hundred and thirty-three verses. Is that it? That's it. you got to see. That. What do you got there? <laughs> what you got the words too? Yeah, four hundred and thirty-three verses and nine thousand. What is it, brother? Nine thousand four hundred seventy-seven words. Um, written. Uh, anybody got a Schofield, the old Schofield reference? What's uh, uh, what's it say? Uh, in that, in the uh, other build, 58 A.D. or the time of the writing, anybody got that? I, 60? Well, most of my that Schofield should say 58 because we think it's a, it's around 58 A.D. 58 A.D. is, a, is about the time of the writing of it. You never can be sure. Uh, you never can be sure exactly when he wrote it, but it's it's right in there and. Uh, some of this uh, stuff can become important the time that Paul wrote these things. Um, so to, um, if you were going to sum up the book of Romans, you would say uh, at the center is justified by the blood atonement of Jesus Christ made available as a free gift. And a man is saved by grace through faith plus nothing. Now there is one thing I wanted to put down here because all these things are going to be in here. And... Um, You'll notice as we study through the book of Romans that you'll see us. See, can everybody see the board so far? You notice when you study through it, you'll see, uh, and I, I hope I can learn how, remember how to spell all this stuff. Uh, you're going to see um, all these words, T-I-O-N, end in T-I-O-N. <laughs> all right. What they are is uh, like... Uh, I already got that one down. Justification. We'll put that in there. Redemption. Propitiation. We'll try to get the definition of all these words. Imputation. Adoption. Sanctification. Expiation. <laughs> and you see these words, and you know what? These words here are missing. They're missing from uh, from our, our vocabulary today. I mean, you know, how, how often do you hear them talk about this stuff on TV? Uh, you don't hear them words. It's the Bible words, you know. I mean, you, you just don't hear them. You know? Justification, redemption, propitiation, imputation, adoption, sanctification, expiation, reconciliation. Those words are in the T-I-O-N. Uh, I got a little, uh, how many of them, uh, need, everybody know exactly what I, they, all, they all mean? Because I, I had to look them all up. You know what they all mean, brother? Which, which ones? Which ones do you know? I don't know that. Expiation. Uh, you know the rest of them, pretty much. Give it a go. What's uh, justification mean? I got it wrote down here now. Uh, so, uh, Brother Josh. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be uh, grading you on this. You might fail Romans right off the bat. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm just joking, man. Go right ahead. Give me justification. <laughs> yeah, that's just if it, just as if I'd never sinned. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's, that's right. Justification from guilt and punishment, an act of free grace by which God pardons a sinner and accepts him. Justification. All right, uh, redemption. Uh, repurchase of captured goods. That's it. Let's give somebody else one. You, uh, I think you know them all. It's, uh, uh, somebody else give me a definition of uh, propitiation. Anybody? I got it wrote down, so. <laughs> oh. Uh, all right, just a minute. Let me get it here. Let me find it here. Propitiation. All right, go ahead. Uh, the act of appeasing wrath and uh, it's uh, uh, of, uh, of an offended person. The atonement or atoning sacrifice offered to God. Propitiation. How about imputation? That's a good one there, man. <laughs> Imputed righteousness. Imputation. Imputation. How about you, Tony? Got any imp imputation? Yeah. The act of imputing or charging, you know. Uh, he, uh, like, uh, uh, say uh, this, uh, this book here, uh, 
Let's see, how does that go? This book, take this book and, uh, well, we got to have two of them, don't we? Yeah. Uh, one of these books is Book of uh, My Life. One of them is Jesus Christ and everything he's done, his life. One of them is Ken Fuse and his life, everything that he's done. Got, one's got my name on it, one's got Jesus Christ's name on it. He takes and switches books with me, takes everything that I've done. And I get, I get his book. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's, that's <laughs> imputation. I mean, you know, he imputed, imputed righteousness. And adoption, of course, is uh, um, somebody give me adoption while I'm trying to find my page back again. Yeah, adoption is uh, the taking and the taking and treating of a stranger as one's own child. God taking sinful children into His favor and protection. Adoption. Uh, how many we got here? One more. How many more we got to go? Three, sanctification. Now, of course, that's sanctification is uh, the act of making holy, purified from sin in the world, separation, consecration. There's two more words, separation and consecration, in T-I-O-N. So that goes along with that sanctification there. And then uh, expiation. How about that one? Anybody know that one? Expiation. I guess that's how you say it. That's, uh, I don't know, that's kind of like uh, this one up here, but... That's the act of atoning for a crime, the act of making satisfaction for an offense by which the guilt is done away. That's expiation. And, of course, reconciliation is the act of reconciling parties at variance, renewal of a friendship, reconciliation. So anyhow, these words, some of these words are found in the book of Romans, and, and, and the reason why I bring them up and put them on the board is they're, they're, they're missing from America's vocabulary today. So I thought I'd uh, put them in there. Okay, so, uh, and now, uh, let's see, what time did I start? 8.30? All right, so, uh, one other thing I was, uh, I found out when I was going through this, uh, maybe some of you know this, but uh, I'll put that down too. Not that it, this would be on a test or anything, but uh, Paul, the apostle, Paul writes to um, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. I'm still in Colorado here. How do you spell Colossians? C O L C O L O S S. Is that right there? Colossians. What's the other two? There's two more. Philippians. And Thessalonians. John, in Revelation, writes to the seven churches. Paul does too. I just seen that. I mean, uh, yesterday. No, yesterday. Whenever it was, I've seen it. <laughs> Isn't that the se- it doesn't He writes Titus, he writes Timothy, but those are he, I mean, uh, prison epistles, whatever. He writes the seven churches, Paul does. Isn't that right? I mean, I know he has first and second Corinthians. That's still, that's the Corinthian church, the local church there. And there's Thessalonians, there's first and second Thessalonians, but seven of them. I thought that was, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know what that means, but <laughs> John writes the seven churches in the book of Revelation. Paul writes the seven churches in the Pauline epistles. Okay, so uh, about that, um, I'll tell you why that I, that, I, that I put this here down, this uh, this. This 58 A.D. thing here. That's important. That's I'll tell you why it's important. Because in the book of Acts, uh, we know at the end of the book of Acts, Paul goes to Rome. He, he appealed to Caesar. And he goes before uh, Agrippa, Festus, and Felix, or whatever his name is. I don't know. But anyhow, he ends up, he appeals to Caesar. He has to go to Rome. All right? And he, he's beheaded at Rome. But uh, Paul writes to the, what we're studying Paul writes to the Romans around 58 A.D., we think, you know, it's, <coughs> to say it's, it's real hard to say exactly, but it's real close to that 58 A.D. And uh, uh, he writes this um, before Acts. Uh, if you read the book of Acts, he probably, writes, he, he probably writes it around 
Acts 21, 22, 23, I don't know for sure, the chapters in Acts, as you, as you, if you read the book of Acts, he, he wrote it around in there in those chapters, somewhere right in there. And it's important, I'll tell you why, because Paul knows about the body mystery, the revelation of the body mystery. Okay, he knows about that. And there's some hyper uh, 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 dispensationalists and ultra dispensationalists that, that, that say that the church started in Acts, after uh, Acts 28, or, or at the end of the book of Acts. Well, Paul uh, wrote to the Romans. He hadn't been there yet. He wrote to them, uh, and it's uh, around uh, 21, 22, chapter 21, 22, 23 of Acts. You know, so he knew about the, the, the body mystery before uh, uh, Stan, Bulger, and O'Hara, who all those people, whoever they are, uh, he, uh, that, that's important to know that. It's just, this is all still uh, introduction here. I'm trying to, ma I don't know if just how much notes I got, so. Is this all okay to do this introduction here? Okay. Okay, so Paul writes to the, um, oh, wait a minute now. Let's see, now, has everybody got that down there? Because I might have to raise something off. I mean, I, I don't, you don't, I don't, not necessarily saying that you have to put all this down. I'll kind of, like I said, I'd kind of let you know. Uh, Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. At the time of this, uh, at the time that he wrote it, of course, uh, uh, Rome had Roman citizens in it, and uh, they say that at the time that he wrote this, he's writing uh, uh, when he writes to the Romans. That's that's covering uh, Europe, Western Europe, uh, Italy, Spain, France, England. Uh, the Romans, uh, I'm not for sure about that, but I mean, I think that they kind of like pretty much had that whole place. That's the Roman Empire in there. And, uh, and we'll see later on, you know, the, uh, the gospel, the, Ro the, the Christians at Rome had, you know, matter of fact, it's in the first chapter. He talks about how that uh, the whole world, you know, you've, uh, uh, he's heard of their faith throughout the whole world. So they were, they were putting it out. The, uh, the Roman uh, Christians were witnessing Christians. So, uh, you know, it was getting out. Uh, so the reason why I say all that is is because you got... Uh, England, Germany, Ireland, Austria, Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, Switzerland, France, Spain. And those are Europeans. And uh, that's what you all are. That's what we are. I mean, uh, we're, uh, I, I know, you know, we say we're Americans, but you, you understand what I'm saying. There was three, uh, three races, Sham, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth is the European. And... Uh, we all came over here, we got our backgrounds, you know, they say mine is uh, French. But I don't know if anybody ever did any history trees. Or, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm from uh, my name, if you, if you do a thing, you know. So we all come over here to get away from Catholicism in Europe, you know, uh, whenever we started. Uh, you know, the Americans, they put in, uh, uh, so, so they say, you know, the Americans, they, which they call the Americans, but they say the real Americans, they put them in... Uh, the name where they where's the place they put the indians at yeah the reservations they we're all europeans so uh, uh so the whole anyhow the whole idea of that is what i'm saying is that romans is the one book that's addressed right to us americans here you, you understand in that sense is that you know i mean this, this is to us here <laughs> okay and uh the pastor uh already already mentioned that uh jew gentile and church which will Get, maybe you know get into a little, that a little bit more as far as who Paul is writing to in the book of Romans okay I right, so uh, Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles so let's start out and open your books Bibles to the book of Romans go to uh, Romans chapter 15 to start with just just for a minute Paul is um, He's the apostle to the Gentiles. You'll see in Rome in Romans chapter 15. I got this here on thing here, so I can go right here to it. I got I got it printed out on my printer. <laughs> my eyes aren't too good, and I can't even see that print when I do that. All right, Romans chapter 15, verse 16. Okay, that I should be a minister, uh, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. Verse 8, verse 8 of that same chapter. 15.8 says that Jesus Christ was a minister to the circumcision. Paul says, 
and Paul's writing in the book of Romans, he says, now I say that Jesus Christ was the minister of the circumcision. He says in verse uh, 18, no, what did I say it was? Verse 16, he said I, that he's a minister to the, uh, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. So Paul's like continuing on here. You know what I, if you know what I'm talking about there, it's a continuation of Christ's ministry. So see you and you, you know, see what, you, what happens is you get in this thing with this, uh, this uh, all this division and rightly dividing, you know, and you say something like that, and people say, oh no, man, wait a minute, hold, you, what are you trying to say here? You know, you're getting Paul and Jesus mixed up already. No, you understand what I'm saying. The verse says Jesus Christ was a minister to the circumcision. Paul says I, and and I am. Uh, he, even met, he says Jesus Christ right in the same verse right there, okay, in verse 8, all right? So, uh, uh, so right, min, right, the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. So, uh, go flip over to uh, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1, and somebody find verse 16. Let me read verse 16. Okay. Paul's a pattern. Paul is our pattern. First Timothy 1 16. Jesus Christ is the minister to the circumcision. Paul is the, uh, uh, the apostle to the Gentiles. And in 1 Timothy 1.16, he says that he's a pattern. So uh, Paul got baptized. He was, Paul was water baptized. You know? So you got to, but you know what? I'm just thinking about something. Let me ask you guys a question. Does everybody in here know and understand? I know some of you do, maybe some of you don't. I'm not sure. Just what is a hyper-dispensationalist? You guys all know. Matt, you know, or Josh, you know what a hyper is. I know Tony knows. Everybody, Eric? No. no. I've heard the word a million times. So, see, when I say uh, that, what I just said there about First Timothy, he says that Paul's a pattern, that he's our, our pattern, and Paul was water baptized. Uh, you read in the book of Acts uh, when uh, he goes down there in uh, the guy's house and, and the scales or whatever it is after he meets the Lord on the road to Damascus, they fall off his eyes and he can see. And you'll see right after that verse, I think it's right in there somewhere where Paul uh, he gets baptized. So he's, you know, the reason why I asked that about the hyper, they either, they either say hyper or ultra dispensational. Pastors teaching a class on uh, rightly dividing and dispensations. Okay. Well, hyper dispensationalists, I'll just say this about them. Hyper dispensationalists and ultra, it's the same thing. They don't believe in uh, water baptism. They say that's um, they say that's a, a ministry. Uh, uh, you know, John the Baptist came baptized. Okay, the Jews. Okay, well, the hyper dispensationalists say that the water baptism is uh, something that uh, the Jews are going to need to do in the tribulation. Okay, and that when. Jesus Christ says in Matthew 28, go into all the world, baptize, you know, preach the gospel, baptize them in the name of the Father. You know, you have to go through the book of Matthew. But anyhow, the, 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 my point is, is that uh, the water baptism, they don't believe in that. Uh, what else is it? They don't believe in um, deacons in the church. Uh, Well, they're, uh, most of them are, uh, uh, the hypers are, uh, they're Stan Bullard and O'Hare. They got this uh, certain, uh, they've been around a long time. There was a new, an upsurge or a re-whatever uh, re of them back in, say, uh, 1980s. They started, they started really hearing about them again and everything. And uh, they're ultra grace, okay? Um, uh, you know, the Baptists, we baptize. Uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know, Paul was baptized. Jesus was baptized. All of his converts were baptized. See, you, you mix truth with uh, 
false and uh, you mix it up see and so they say that just you know this is we live in the age of in the time of grace here you're saved by grace through faith that's correct <laughs> absolutely right your grace plus nothing you know what's ephesians 2 2 8 is it 2 8 for we are saved by grace through faith and that not of yourself uh, was that how they go not of works lest any man should boast you know grace you know and and, and we are this that's one of the dispensations that the pastor will talk about the, the age that we live in the grace you know but uh, that, so when I say when when when, when it had you read the verse in Timothy Paul says he's a pattern I hear that's Pauline epistle if they say they're Pauline and they say oh that's another thing you know they say we don't use nothing in Genesis to Malachi that's Old Testament we don't use Matthew Mark Luke or John that's also Old Testament that's Jesus preaching to the Jews uh, we don't use Acts the Acts is a history book uh, we use uh, Romans Corinthians right through uh, to uh, what is it? I, I people say all that they say that different Philemon Philemon what's the guy's name you know I don't know what his name is you know how do you say it Philemon okay so they go from Romans to Philemon and they say that's the books they don't use you know Hebrews uh, yeah some of them some of them only use the uh, some of them only use the, pr the pr so right they don't even use that they use only the prison epistles just a few of them so man look what they're doing the whole Bible's almost gone when they're done cutting. You know, when they're done chopping and slicing away, there's nothing left. So uh, let, let, me tell you, let me show you something, if I remember right. Now, this ain't in my notes. But turn, somebody turn to Romans chapter 16, the last, the last part of it. There's a P.S. that Paul puts on it. Last few verses of Romans 16. <coughs> I think it's like, how many, how many verses are in that chapter anyhow? 27 so somebody go up to say 25 is it 24 or 25 what's 24 say 20 is it 25 read 25 Tony hold it right there now to him there's a power to establish you Paul's ending the epistle to the uh, to the Romans he says now to him that is able to establish you according to uh, what did you say? T according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. Where did Jesus Christ preach at? What books? What books did Jesus Christ preach in? What do you hear about in it? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're Pauline. They say they're following Paul. Paul says Jesus Christ right there. That's where, that's where you read about Jesus Christ and what he done. I, I'm just saying, you know, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get on the, we can't stay there on that because we could be there all night on the hyper dispensationalists. See, you, you can just go and go and go, man. You get one of these groups, you can go forever on them, you know. So we've got to move on. But uh, I, I ask, you know, does everybody know what a ultra dispensationalist is? See, uh, another thing. You know, one thing makes you remember something else. <laughs> okay. You know, the book of Proverbs says that a false balance is an abomination. Okay. Hyper dispensationalists, I, I, to sum them up, you could say they're, just, they're, just, they're, they're all intellectual stuff, you know. All the doctrines, the Bereans, man, we search the scriptures, you know, the hyper dispensation. On one hand, to the extreme. And Calvinists, uh, the hyper Calvinists, that's another group, they're also right, with, right in there with them, okay. The Charismatics, the Church of God, are, are the Nazarenes, or there's all bunches of different names for them, they're all spiritual supposedly you know okay so they 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 concentrate on that end okay to the other extreme you know they don't like to get into too much doctrine i'm not saying all of them are like that but most of them you know doctor now well, let's let's get the holy ghost you know and <laughs> let's spin around in acts 238 you know mark 16 with the signs and they stay there where the hypers stay over here well there's a there's a balance there's a balance you know, I'm not saying we're riding the fence. I'm just saying there's a balance. You know, we got the whole Bible. We don't have just, you know, a couple books or prison epistles. You know. So that ain't none of that. None of that. The last ten minutes isn't in here. So I don't even need no notes, really. Actually, I guess I can just, you know, once you once you get once you get started here, you can just go. You know, <laughs> I thank the Lord for that. Thank the Lord. All right. Um, so uh, uh, now. Um, 
pastor did mention already in there about the um, so the uh, when when Paul writes to the Romans he's writing to the three classes of people Paul's writing to to uh, unsaved Gentiles they're there you'll see that in a little bit he's writing to uh, uh, unsaved Jews and he's writing to the Christians at Rome three different three different there's uh, uh, now remember this so see so even though that these people are we say Paul Paul these are these are Gentiles that are saved but what's the Bible say there's neither Jew nor Greek okay so uh, that's the Christian that's the church there's neither Jew nor Greek in Christ and now there's people that are that are that are not in Christ and they're lost they're the Gentiles and then there's the Jews, or the oracles of God were given to. So there are three, three, and, and that's, and you have to make a distinction there. You have to say, you have to ask yourself, when you're going through that Bible, you've got to say, who is speaking? To whom is he speaking? Is he speaking to Israel, the Jew? Is he speaking to the, gen, to, to, to the Gentile nations? Or, a, or is he speaking to me, an uh, individual, a Christian, born again in Christ? So, you know, if, if you don't, I mean, you get reading, and you you could get all you could get something completely off. You know, uh, as a matter of fact, I'll show you something. Go to Romans chapter six, verse twenty-three. Everybody should know that verse. That's this verse is really used a lot in in uh, soul winning. You know, witnessing. Romans six twenty-three. What's it say? For the wages of sin. Is that how it starts out? Wages of sin. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you read, now we use that in personal work, okay? But if you read Romans 6 and you read up through there, you just start looking up through there at some of those verses there, you'll find out that that, well, the wages of sin is death. Paul's talking, that, what he's talking to is there is Christians and stuff coming down through there. Well, we use it as, you know, I mean, you understand what I'm saying by that? That's, that's dressed to, see, so right there, I'm just, I'm making that, a, giving you an example there on that, you know. We use it for, but, but that's addressed, I think that, that pretty much that, that whole page or half a page, the chapter down there is talking, he's talking to Christians there. For the way, you know, you, you Christians can get messed up, man. Um, then one other thing before we actually go right to the book and start getting the first verse, one more thing. Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles because they reject God the Father in the Old Testament. The nation of Israel rejects God the Son. They, here they reject God the Son in the New Testament, crucify him. Acts chapter 7, Stephen stands up and tells them, uh, he preaches to them about their history. They stone him to death. They kill him. He, he looks in the heavens. He sees Jesus standing on the right hand of God, about ready to come back. I don't know, you know. Uh, uh, Paul is right there. He watches that. He holds the coat for them. Uh, and isn't it chapter uh, 8, the very next chapter, Paul gets, who, who is, what we're, what we're getting ready to study, Paul the apostle to the Gentiles. Cornelius gets, it goes to a Gentile. Peter has to go and tell, uh, you know, God says, hey, you know, Peter, rise, you know, slay and eat. You know, we've got something new here going on. You go Cornelius, go down there. He's a Gentile. Cornelius gets saved. And so it's, what I'm saying is it's going away from the Jews, going away from Israel, from Jerusalem. Now it's starting to spread out. You know, God calls Paul. So they reject, they reject God's Holy Spirit. They reject the whole Godhead by now. The Trinity. Old Testament. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit by then. He says, okay, from henceforth I go to the Gentiles. But God's going to go back with Israel. There's a lot of people. Now, we'll get into that, too, in the book of Romans here. God's not done with them. They're blinded in part to the fullness of the Gentiles become in, but he's not done with them. There's a lot of people that say that God is completely done with them, whether the spiritual Jews forget the Jews. No, boy, that's not so. And we'll get into that later on. <coughs> 